on Ice Hockey UK TV in association with SMP Europe. I'm really delighted to be joined by the new Ice Hockey UK chairman, Clifton Rottersley. Clifton, thank you very much for joining us. It's great to have you talking to us. And, and I guess my, my first question is, it's, it's a big challenge. It's a big role to undertake. What are your aims for, for the role as, as chairman? Um, first of all, Chris, I, I want to say that I'm deeply, deeply honoured to have been chosen to chair Ice Hockey UK. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the outgoing chair, Richard Greveson. Um, Richard has presided over the organization during a period of sustained success on the ice for the GB senior men's team. He was in post for a IIHF World Championships on home soil for the first time in 25 years, with Belfast hoping, hosting the Division 1B World Champs in 2017. The GB senior men won back-to-back -back promotion um, and a IIHF Championship gold medal in 2017 and 18, something never achieved by any nation in the history of the sport. And in the 2019 World Champs, playing in the top division for the first time since 1994 against the best teams in the world, GB didn't look out of place. And as we all know, in an epic final came back from a 3-0 defeat to beat France 4-3, in overtime to remain in the top tier for the next installments. So it's a hugely exciting time, I think, for Ice Hockey UK and Team GB, as well as the sport nationally, as we look towards preparing our senior men's team for the world champs due to take place in Riga, Latvia in May and June this year. What, I, what, what a welcome respite it's gonna be for the ice hockey community in the UK and indeed the world, which, has really seen little, if, if any, elite competitive ice hockey to feast their eyes on over the past year or so. What a fantastic prospect it's going to be to see our boys in action once again against the very best. Personally, I can't, I can't wait. Um, so, to your question, what are my aims? Well, first of all, I quite like to still be in the job in 12 months time, and that's only going to happen if I have the support of the rest of my colleagues on the board. In all honesty, I want to build on Richard's legacy. I want to see the sport run by one governing body. But before that happens, we have to rebuild. Our sport's been through a period of massive dislocation largely due to um, the pandemic that's affected so many people's lives inside the sport and indeed across the whole country. Our best wishes, of course, go out to all of those that have been affected by it. We've also witnessed significant upheavals in terms of the sport's governance, which has come under intense scrutiny in the last couple of years, rightly so. I believe that ice hockey UK isn't alone in needing to bring its own governance up to date. Um, along with the focus on a return to play, Ice Hockey UK will also be leading in that process uh, to make the UK's national governing body fully fit for purpose. So that we're considered as a compelling partner, both within our sport and for those that would like to join us, either as affiliates or commercially. I've already discussed with my colleagues on the board that I'd like to see the Ice Hockey UK board work towards structuring a more diverse board and leadership team, representing all stakeholders appropriately, and actually helping our stakeholders achieve those same goals. I'm sure that over the coming weeks, we'll be discussing various other ways in which Ice Hockey UK can lead the process of renewal in our sport uh, in this country. However, I, the Ice Hockey UK board, and I'm sure the whole ice hockey community in the UK, would like to see all stakeholders in the, in the sport pull together to support one main aim over the next few months, getting the sport back on its feet. This needs to happen at all levels, elite through to grassroots. Ice Hockey UK will lead in that process. We've already heard from the national development head coach Tony Hand and the GB program board about a return to play for all of the G GB junior teams in July and uh, June and July this year. I'll also be discussing with my fellow board members other ways in which we can help with that return to play process. 
we'll, we'll touch on how closely you want to work with the other governing bodies. You, you touched on it there in your, in your answer. We'll, we'll go on to that shortly. But I guess, guess my next question is, you've talked about how tough the role is going to be. Um, not a lot of people may know this, but it's an unpaid role. It's 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 not a it's not a big role as chief exec chairman that that gets millions of pounds. It's unpaid. So, what made you want to take up the role? Um, well, first of all, it probably won't surprise you to know that I'm fanatical about sport. Um, you've only got to ask my wife Sasha, who's constantly having to take the remote off me when we watch TV together. It's always on sport. Um, I've been in and around ice hockey for over eight years and elite sport for almost 25 years. Since retiring from professional sports some 15 years ago, I've had several varied roles in sports governance, ranging from the chair of two NGBs for two nations. Those were very different experiences. I've been a board member of an NGB and several commercial organizations. And more recently, I've sat on a group that's specifically tasked with providing specialist performance and oversight and advice to the highest performing winter sport at, at Olympic level in the UK, that's um, skeleton. I've witnessed a lot of good in the sport of ice hockey, mostly with the way that players are so passionate about the sport, that parents of kids in the grassroots game and volunteers are so engaged. But unfortunately, I've also witnessed plenty of bad, mainly, as I said, around governance and, and politics. The great thing is that Ice Hockey UK has a board with a broad mix of in-depth hockey knowledge, commercial experience, as well as financial and operational expertise. There are maybe a couple of areas where we can bolster this already strong group, but that's something to address with my fellow board members over the coming weeks. What Ice Hockey UK and Team GB undoubtedly have is a group of elite athletes players and support staff that have real fire and ambition to be the very best they can be, to reach their full potential and fulfill their dreams. That's something that we as a board have to nurture. I've always believed that leadership is about enabling the talent of others to shine through. We will be there to enable our elite players and support staff and our stakeholders to live their dreams and to coin a phrase that's been used in the past to encourage them to dare to dream uh, that's a that's a wonderful answer a, a phrase coined of course by the great pete russell gb head coach uh, i want to touch now on, on working with the other governing bodies and, and leagues most people involved in ice hockey know you've got ice hockey uk england ice hockey association scotland you've got the elite league as well basically separate entities how close do you want to work with these bodies together uh, as one really how close do you want to reach out to them and work with them so the elite league um scottish ice hockey and the iha as you said are affiliate members of ice hockey uk they're governed and operated uh, under separate structures to ice hockey uk however they are our responsibility to work with in partnership to promote the sport we all love so dearly. So, of course, we will be working with them closely, hand in glove with them, uh, to help them achieve their goals. It's our responsibility to represent them both nationally and internationally, and that's what we should and will do. Um, we should also reach out to other areas of the sport to help represent them nationally and internationally. I think there's huge potential to work far closer with, for instance, um, the, the Elite League. After all, it's the flagship for ice hockey in the UK and can be a huge talisman to help grow our sport at, at all levels. I'd also like to see Ice Hockey UK take the lead in looking to expand, for instance, the women's game. Um, we've really only scratched the surface of, of what's possible here and, and need to leave no stone unturned in looking to bring more women into the sport, starting obviously with the, the younger age groups. I wonder, you know, what's, what's your number one job? You, you're basically in post now, as, as from the announcement. You know, if, if you look around and think, ah, that's, that's the number one job for me, is, is there a number one at the top of your to-do list? Um, Chris, there, there are too many jobs on my list um, to, to pick out just one. But as I've already mentioned, governance is going to be key. After all, that's what, a national governing body is there to do, govern. 
within a framework that protects its assets, supports its stakeholders, and ultimately promotes the sport in, in, in the very best light. Commercial marketing and comms, we need to shine a spotlight on the commercial value of, of the sport so that it gets the recognition it deserves. My feeling is we should have strategies in place for each of the three areas with um, strategic reviews carried out every four to five years. I'd look to personally support this in, in any way that I can. Um, I want to have a chat with venue owners and managers to put together a facility strategy. Um, I'd like to think that we as the UK's national governing body can forge a close relationship with the rinks and ownership groups to allow better access to ice hockey stakeholders. We could look at increasing the number of facilities, the, the refurbishment of, of, of others that are, that are run down, um, as well as approach Sport England and other funding agencies for facilities grants. Now, something that's a personal goal of mine, I'd like to set up a scholarship or bursary fund to provide grants for families who don't necessarily have the financial resources for ice hockey. As we all know, it's an expensive sport, but we do it because we love it. There's an adult fund for players exiting the game in the IHBPF. Why not for kids entering and continuing with it? I've already had discussions with various people about setting one up, and I think we could get to a critical mass pretty quickly. Finally, I like to think that the one area of the sport that UK, Ice Hockey UK um, should excel at is high performance elite, it goes without saying. So I'd want to almost immediately explore how to best support the existing men's senior team in the upcoming World Championships and beyond, bringing through the next generation of players to, to join them. With the cancellation of the 2020 tournament, which was due to be held in my adopted nation of Switzerland, um, 2021's upcoming tournament being held in Riga, Latvia. The GB men's team are again taking on the best teams in the world, but with a knowledge that there won't be any relegation from the top flight, which I hope will open up potential opportunities to further develop the group ahead of the, 19, uh, the 2022 edition of the World Champion in Finland. One idea I've been mulling around with a few people is establishing a national academy set up in the UK. Um, we'd examine the best practice from around the world to find out, find out what, what, what would work best in this country. Now, a lot of players spend their formative ice hockey careers in, in North America or elsewhere in the world. But I don't think our elite kids and their parents should have to make that huge sacrifice to achieve their dreams. We already have one or two um, exemplars of, of the academy type set up in, in the UK. And of course, we have great camp commercial providers. But I truly believe that we can expand these opportunities nationally so that kids in all areas of the UK aren't left behind simply because they don't have the chance to play more competitive hockey more of the time and closer to home. Um, so, Chris, sorry, that doesn't necessarily answer your question, but hopefully it gives you a taste of what I'll be presenting to the board over the next few days and, and weeks. One final word. Um, I know we're all going to get behind our boys when they take to the ice for the first time against Russia and Riga Latvia. Uh, I, I think it's 4.15 p.m. local time on Saturday, the 22nd of May. But in case we can't be there in person, let's wish them all the very best. Wonderful. I'm sure we'll talk before then. Thank you very much for joining us, Clifton, on Ice Hockey UK TV in association with SMP Europe. Distinct pleasure. Thanks, Chris.